This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. Atlas Iron, which has an ASX code of AGO, is an iron ore explorer, developer and producer in the Pilbara in Western Australia with a market capitalisation of $470 million. Its managing director, David Flanagan, joins me now. Hi, David. Welcome to ABN yeah, Newswire. Yeah, how are you, Brian? I'm very well. You must have been a happy bloke when uh, Atlas's first shipload of iron ore left the shores for China back in December. It was more of a relief. There was a lot of work that went into it. And uh, w when we finally got it off, it was, it was fantastic, but more relief than than, than, than surprise and happiness, I that suppose. That was just the beginning though, wasn't it? It, w it was. Like, this is the first step. We want to get to then 6 million tonnes per annum and then 12 million tonnes per annum, and, and that's what we're about. What sort of data have you got on that? We want to do 6 million tonnes next year, 9 the next year, and then 12 in 12. So 12 million tonnes for calendar year, and that's a big business. So how big is the reserve and what sort of quality is it? Um, at the moment, we've been adding around about 30 to 40 million tonnes a year to our resources. And at the moment, it's 56 million tonnes. We don't have a very long life at the moment. I suppose as a company, we're four years old. But by the end of this year, we're well on our way right now to have 120 million tonnes. And we've done 24,000 metres of drilling this year. It's only, uh, it's only May. And that's, so not, that's not just from Pardu, is it? No, it's drilling at Pardu, it's Wajina and Abydos. But all of that is close to Port Hedland. And that's a key strategy for us, get close to the port and it means short time to production, low capital costs and low barriers to entry. And that's one of your advantages isn't it, you do have very close access to great infrastructure. It's absolutely core to it, Port Hedland is the biggest iron ore port in the world, the Pilbara is the best place to be mining iron ore in the world, the, the resources there are massive, we've got a 9,000 square kilometre land holding. So we've got a big net, we're going to catch some big fish. So uh, you're obviously not daunted by a really rapid expansion during the global economic crisis. Yeah, I don't know. No, we're not. No, we, we, we actually see that as we grow, our operating costs are going to come down. And we've actually got a more secure business. So is that the only thing driving that confidence? Uh, no, I've got, just got back from China yesterday. And it's not just pushing iron ore to China, they're pulling it. They want it. They want to deal with companies like Atlas that can provide great service, a great product, and they can deal direct with the supplier. We're cutting out the middleman, and that's how they want to do business, and so do we. And you, you've got twofold goals here, isn't there, really, to become the fourth biggest iron ore producer in Australia, and also to start supplanting the domestic Chinese supplies. Yeah, at, at the moment, the Chinese production is higher cost and we are displacing some of that and we're only doing it on a small scale but Australians in general are doing a lot of it that the Australian producers but we do want to build a big business but we also want to do it in a real socially responsible way and we, we think that there's an opportunity for cultural change within the other big mining companies in the Pilbara and we can lead the way there. And you're very conscious of environmental issues obviously uh, uh, indigenous, indigenous issues are something that you're working very closely with the local community on. Oh we've got 40 people working for in the mine at the moment and 18 of them are Aboriginal. Okay? No one has achieved that rate of uptake of Indigenous employees anywhere else in the Pilbara. Wow, that's fantastic. So um, what's, the, uh, what's the plan over the next, say, five years? Again, next year to do six, then to do nine, then to do 12. We've also got a magnetite deposit. It's a world-class asset. It's, it has an opportunity to build in 15 million tonnes per annum of concentrate production, concentrate, um, for 35 years. Now that's a big mine. It'll be one of the biggest mines in the world. We're going to bring in a partner, invest quite a bit of money in that infrastructure, the partner that's going to be part of that deal, and that will grow the production. And the target then is to get us to 27 million tonnes, ultimately. Wow, that's so what's, what's the secret? How have you managed to, to keep your costs so low? I, I, I think it comes back to just the values in the business. Juniors, you've got to work with what your advantage is. We work off a small cost base. Our, our start off, in the beginning, our overheads were like 50 grand a month. So you just sort of, you've got to be dynamic, jump at all the opportunities as they come and continue to jump at opportunities to do things better and get close to infrastructure, which means you don't have to build a road or a railway line or a port. It's there, you just pay the incremental cost of using that infrastructure. And, and that's just beautiful. So it's, work again, the old cliche, working smarter, not necessarily harder. Yeah. It, Although it, I'm sure you're working really hard. Yeah, yeah we are. Like, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but it's about looking at the infrastructure and seeing the opportunity as opposed to the barriers. Sometimes it helps not to know what you can't do.
<laughs> let's, let's a little gaze into the crystal ball finally. How long until we we reach a point of recovery, proper recovery, perhaps back to the same sort of stage we were uh, before the global financial crisis hit? How long is that going to take, do you think, before the global economy gets back to up to speed? Yeah, I reckon it's a... It's probably more of a, a psychological type issue. When people continue to get up in the morning and they realise that it's not the end of the world. I can go out there and make a buck and, and my kids are happy playing at school and I will live, I will get by, life's not that bad. And it isn't. You know, and, and you build a business and you target a, a certain point on the cost curve and try and get down there. And if you do, you'll have a sustainable business. And that's, that's what we plan to do. I understand the share price is on the rise too. It is. Uh, someone's giving it a good hammering at the moment. It's fantastic. People are seeing the value. And we've just come back, we're talking and explaining the strategy to people. And it, that people read it, but then if they hear it from you, they, they get a greater understanding. And there's a lot of value to be had. David Flanagan, Managing Director of Atlas Iron, thanks so much for joining us. No, you're welcome. Thank you. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.